Welcome back to another episode of Chief Central. Um, I mean, pretty good weekend. Yeah, it was a very good home opener weekend. I mean, and, the, and not to mention, I guess, one on the road before the home opener. Just yeah. Take, on the road to start the season, they look pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. I honestly, uh, they, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Me too. That game in Wenatchee on Friday, I um, actually a closer game than the score indicated. It was close all the way until the very end. That was a good game. It was a good game. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, um, I felt like there was a, the refs weren't really letting them play too much. There was a lot of penalties no. called both sides. Um, but the Chiefs penalty kill in that game was they were seven for seven. So that was yeah. p- positive. Well, you got defensemen moving their feet and helping out the goalie and pushing people around in front of the net and stuff too. We haven't seen that in a while. No, it's it's a healthy change and it's yeah, definitely it something is. that we've been lacking. Yeah. Um, we, and, and we've, one one other we've commented thing, on that for years. One other thing that honestly, the main thing I noticed. Uh, in these games this past weekend, it's just how physical our D men are. Yes, I mean, all around. God, Weinstein just laying bodies. Yeah, on well, we, uh, on the road, and we saw him come back from camp doing that last year too, and it lasted about a week, and then it kind of went back to a little bit more of a just stay at home and finesse type thing and positional, which I'm totally fine with too. But um, it's nice to see him play the physical game because he's able to do that. Well, yeah, he. I mean, for being kind of a smaller guy, uh, yeah, he he definitely he, he's. He's definitely packs a punch when he hits you. Like he, yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty, pretty solid. bulky. Yeah. Um, and he knows how to throw the body and he knows how to take a hit too. So uh it, th- that's definitely nice. And I think the other guys that came back from camp is falling in suit too. I mean, McGuy's yeah. laying bodies left and right, and Mays is laying bodies. And yeah. You know, something we probably don't think of because we don't play hockey and stuff too. It probably hurts to hit somebody too. So not only are you trying to you know, hurt them a little bit, make them feel it. It probably hurts you too. So maybe that's why it doesn't happen as often as we would like. That's true. I'm sure the adrenaline probably kind of numbs that pain a little bit yeah. too though. But yes, I know what you're saying. Like yeah. definitely. And I mean, all around, like we, we kind of already kind of talked about a little bit, but it's like our, our defense just, they're moving their feet. They're helping out. They're clearing the puck out of the crease. Like I've noticed even on the penalty kill that like, there's actually a guy like kind of pushing the guy away from, the mm-hmm. goalie in front of the net and they're not and I, leaving i think any we space. talked about it last podcast too how about the uh 200 foot game by the forwards and stuff coming back and helping out too we noticed that a lot in the home opener a hundred percent our fast guys getting back and helping out by the time the other team gets to the blue line and stuff too and with back check it's nice to see that uh yeah i was i noticed that Catton was back checking pretty hard too Catton, which is preston well, Preston's wheels just it blows yeah. my mind. And that, I mean in person so in person, it's even crazier. Yeah. That kid's I mean, fast. He just turns it on. And once he gets going, he's by you. Like yeah. there's no catching up. Yeah. Um but yeah, that I I mean I still I still am like struggling to find the words how to describe it. Like because like it's like it's not something that we're used to seeing from these guys. It's like a no. completely different, a completely different team, and it's it's for the better. Yeah, I, mean, I was funny at you say that because I felt like Saturday we moved to a different city and, and we're going to a different team's games now. Yeah, it's it honestly, <laughs> it, it really does feel like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I mean, I love it. I, like, this is the kind of hockey that I love watching, especially when it's, uh, you know, a team that you're a fan of. Yeah, exactly. It's nice not being the ones that are getting rolled over by teams playing like that. Right. And yes, it's still early in the season and anything can happen. But I mean, it's a honestly pretty close mm-hmm. to a per- perfect of a start as you can get yeah, i'm liking what i'm seeing so far um i thought goaltending was great cowan played both yep. of the games friday saturday after coming back from sharks camp and he he looked dialed in i mean he i didn't notice any any weaknesses in his game no um shocker hi chloe hi chloe that was from cappy chloe can be a guest you want to be a guest you want to give your opinion on the game on saturday yeah all right come here yes definitely um i think that par shouldn't have gotten a game misconduct because the refs are stupid oh okay valid and there should have been more fights okay can you edit that out i don't want to be in it <laughs> <laughs> can you hear what she said no she goes can you edit that out i don't want to be in it <laughs> <laughs> too bad too late now you're in <laughs> um but 
uh, to we'll, we'll kind of go in chronological order. We'll start with Friday. Like really great start. I mean, again, it it, it was a pretty tight game early on. Uh, Wenatchee uh, scored pretty early in the in the game, five minutes in, and actually, I guess that was. Yeah, 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 five minutes in and uh shorthanded goal. So obviously not what we'd like to see, you know, have, have a have a chance at one end and then take a penalty and then the goes down the other way and they score shorthanded. Don't obviously don't like to see that, but then we answered five minutes Pretty later. Quick. Yeah. Van Olm's first of the season, which started a, a hell of a weekend for him. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, I, I was walking around to some buddies at intermission on Saturday and it's like, that was the only thing we could talk about. was just how he's just all over the place. Like he, yeah. he is everywhere all at once. And it's what you it, want to see out of one year, 20 year olds. Well, start. and you can definitely tell that he's liking being a, a leader too yes. Yes. and being one of the guys. And I'm sure he's got that a on his sweater for a reason. Yeah, I think so too. I, and you know, we were listening to like his post game interview with Jay down on the ice after the game. And it's just like the way that he was talking about like the city and the fans and like the team yeah. and stuff too. It, it's definitely, that's definitely a positive influence that the, every locker room needs. So I, I am glad that we kept him around. Oh, me too. I, I think that there was no doubt in my mind that he was staying, but um, yeah, his first of the season. And then uh, Asanali Sarkinov making his WHL debut in that game too, recorded uh, his first ever point. Yeah, on that play, he played good that game. He looked good both games. I was really impressed yeah. with what I well, saw. It was fun to him. watch him in person too. Obviously, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then for the second game in a row, we see Mathis Preston just bleeding through everybody and sniping one. Kid's got an incredible, incredibly quick shot. Well, and I remember I was sitting in the chair back here, and I just looked at you and I said, "I can't believe how good this kid's shot is." Yeah, like it. It seriously it blows my mind. I feel like I haven't seen a shot. A good comparison for me, at least, is. Jared Anderson Dolan. Yeah, it comes it uh it gets I mean, it to comes the goal- off your stick so quick. It gets to the goalie quicker than they're expecting. Yeah, you can definitely yeah. tell it surprises them. And that's and that's yeah. the other thing too, is that it's not just power, like it's it's accurate. Yes. Like 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 the kid knows what he's doing. He's been a projected top prospect for the 26 draft for like the last th- two years he, already. He sniped one off the post on Saturday night, too. Yeah, he did. The goalie didn't even move on. Absolutely. And I think that at some point, although I do really like our top line right now with Cat and Ekstrom and Vandal, I, I think too. it's a perfect mix of skill, speed, grit, and yeah. just finesse. Yes. Um, but I, I think if we can somewhere down the line get Cat and Preston on the same line, I definitely, uh, although Catton's, you know, a pretty gifted goal scorer, yes. he, even in the post game interview, like he described he himself as a playmaker. He likes yeah. to dish and, uh, I think him and Preston together could be a pretty nasty combination. I mean, yeah, we I saw too. it in camp yeah. and and everything too, but I think in a real game scenario, I think those two could be pretty deadly out there. Together. That's a goalie's nightmare. Maybe put him out there on the power play or something. Yeah, absolutely. And he's already playing pretty big minutes for a 16 year old too. Well, even all, with of our all... 16, all of our 16 year olds are. <clears throat> yeah, no kidding. And that's the other thing too. It's like they, they you know, you think after opening weekend, maybe the, kind of that get their nerves settled back down a bit and might kind of settle in and you know but they're they still played the same kind of game like they were solid i thought every every 16 i thought cohen harris was great on saturday yeah he was i mean i felt like he was everywhere um but yeah i mean going back to friday the chiefs kept that lead through i want to say 10 minutes left in the third period maybe and, yeah and then then when actually finally got a couple on the board pretty quick and we were up four to one at one point oh and martin what a play with him and par and that two on one yeah uh i we thought, thought par, they overpassed i thought par made one too many passes right there because yeah. the goalie was already scrambling down when yeah. par had it there but he tossed it back and martin buried it um so that that was that was nice to see it's nice to see the guys being able to kind of dish the puck freely like that too and actually hit hit you know the tape and tape to tape, yeah. Actually, bury it, uh, and then l- right after that, a couple minutes into the third period, Par sets up or Martin sets up Par this time, returns the favor, his first goal of the season. Um, Brett Sather got his first WHL point with the assist on that play, and then Wenatchee would answer back two straight goals pretty quickly. And they put on some pressure late, pulling the goalie on a six on four because the Chiefs took another penalty, and uh, Nathan Mays 
b- shot the puck down the ice and buried it for uh, an empty netter and made yeah. it six to three, and that was the final, which I predicted. You did predict. I predicted a six to three, you and did. what else did I predict again? You also predicted the Saturday score too. I also predicted four to one on Saturday, which was you the did. final. So I, I'm pretty proud of myself. I'll give myself a pat on the back for that. You should. That's. I think that's the first time anybody's done that. Since <laughs> done that. I was impressed. Uh, Dawson Cowan played played all 60 minutes in his return from the Sharks training camp. He made 32 saves. I thought he looked great. Yep. Um, Owen Martin led all skaters with the goal and two assists on his, his, him returning to the lineup. Him and Gillespie both returned to the lineup. I was a little bit concerned that we weren't going to see Martin for a while. Cause Me uh, too. on the last weekly report last week, it was the day after we recorded last week that yeah. it came out and it said that he was still out week to week. And then two days later, he's in the lineup in Wenatchee and he, he, that hadn't missed a step. I mean, didn't seem like it. No, we we definitely like his game too. We talked about that a lot on Saturday. Yeah. I mean, I, I think he's. I mean, he put in 15 goals last year as a 16. I' curious to see how he, how he's going to develop a little bit more this year. Yeah, me too. I think it's a. T- he's another guy that NHL teams are going to want to have on their radar in the next year or two. Yeah, I, he's definitely noticeable out there. Absolutely, it's not often you see fifteen-year-old or sixteen-year-old scoring fifteen goals in a season. Yes, um, and I think I think it was like eleventh in sixteen-year-olds in Chiefs history scoring-wise. Oh, was it really? Year. Yeah, I can't or, remember. I remember it was pretty high, but I can't remember what it was. Yeah, no, it was yeah. either it was tenth or eleventh, I think. But yeah, I mean, impressive nonetheless. And then, um. Chiefs ended up out shooting Wenatchee 42 35 in that game. And another huge, we got our first power play goal of the season. About time. Uh, kind of nice to get the little monkey out the back. Went power play one for five. Pe- uh, Penalty kill went seven for seven, though. That was good. Um, which is huge because that was a huge issue for us for a long time. Yeah. And e- even when, you know, we were decent and had, you know, a, a, a good season where our pe- penalty kill was still pretty lackluster. So yes. it's nice. It's nice to see a, a perfect penalty kill. And even Saturday night, it was pretty good too. I think we were four for five. So um, face off wins, another huge thing that we've kind of been talking about a little bit. Chiefs uh, won the face off battle against Wenatchee 37 to 21. Wow. That's a pretty big differential. Well, and I mean, we noticed it last year with some of the younger guys that we had and, and Kat and two and everything, but yes. like, those guys are so good at, at winning the face-offs and um, Martin, Martin can win face-offs. Well, um, a, a lot of the six, Cohen Harris is good in the dot. Yeah. Kat and obviously current, you can get down from there, buddy. Um. But yeah, that, that's another huge thing that's, it's like the little things that can make the biggest difference. Well, it's easier to uh, put the puck in your own net and keep it out of your the other your, your net. I guess put it in the other net and keep it out of your net when you have control of the puck. And the absolutely you have is on a dead puck situation is to win the face off and take possession. I mean, it's hundred it, percent. It, it's simple. It seems well, like well, and that's the other thing too. It's like you don't even have to win it clean. Just kind of push in and knock the guy out of there and let your one of your guys come in. And they seem to be doing that really well. So I don't I don't know what it is that the coaches are kind of implanting in their heads with that, but it, whatever it is, it's working. It's it to me, it's just basic hockey. It's just like learning how to dribble and whatever is basic basketball too. And I feel like that in past that that wasn't an emphasis. And you and I talked about it just watching games as we're sitting in the stands. We couldn't figure out why they wouldn't put the best face off guys on the team out there in you know a defensive zone draw with thirty seconds left and a goalie pulled for the other team. We could never figure that kind of stuff out. Yeah, and you know the puck would always end up in the back of the net yeah. because we would never win we, win in those situations. We wouldn't get possession. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I. It's again one of the really nice things that I've noticed about the team so far this year is just they just look like they're just playing free out there. Yeah, they do. But within like, structure. but yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you said, within structure, like it's not like they're you know they're doing what they want to do and they're playing in their own head and everything too. But they're still doing it within the structure and it's working. Yeah, and so it, far and, I like it. Um, carry that win into Saturday night, home opener against Tri City, eighty three hundred fans. Pretty good opening night crowd. I'd say so. Yeah, I I really I really thought the crowd. I mean, it was loud as hell in there. It was loud. It was loud and it was great and um, new lights. Man, those lights are sick, aren't they? <laughs> 
I, I know people that were wearing sunglasses during the game because they were so bright. No kidding. Yeah. They really were. I mean, when they turned the lights on again after the anthems, I was like, holy yeah. cow. But I love how they're they were like changing colors, red and blue yeah, the and red, everything too. The during red like and blue the, during goals. Yeah. The in, in the entrance video and everything. Yeah. Um kind of going along to the beat of the music, which Master of Puppets, great song choice. Nice job. Love geez. that. Um <clears throat> So uh, off to a off to a good start with that puck drop crowd was into it. Um, played most of the period scoreless. It yeah, was, it was a pretty back and forth. Uh, honestly, it was it a pretty was. back and forth game. I think it was general. nine shots apiece after one period. Yeah, it was. And then uh, five minutes left. Chiefs on the power play get their second power play goal of the year with a just beauty from Rasmus Ekstrom. Yeah. Man, that t- watching him kind of skate through those two guys in that toe drag, or thinking like, "God, please do it." And what did I tell you? And he snipes it, and then you said, "You looked at me immediately after." Said WHL highlight of the night right there, and sure as hell, it was. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it was beautiful. Great first home goal of the season for sure. Crowd got back into it, and yeah, um, from there it was it was it was all Chiefs. Like they they looked good. They looked really good, and then carry a one nothing lead into the intermission, and then. Five minutes into the second period, Van Olm once again, him and extra on a two on one. Again, that top line with him, yes, those two and Cat, and I love it. Um, they got off to a two on one, and extra had missed the net, puck went behind the net, and Van Olm somehow got back there and then quickly he just kind of tucked it back in front. He just kind of dove towards the crease and tucked it. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was pretty impressive too. Um, and then he uh, tipped in a wrister later on in the uh, second period for uh, from Crampton on the point in the power play. Second power play goal of the night. That's another yep. huge thing. Um, Ekstrom had another assist on that. So he got three points in the game as well. And then uh, so Van Olm finished with two goals and an assist and Ekstrom had a goal and two assists. And then third period pre- got pretty chippy again. Uh, it, the second period, it, I felt like it, it wasn't, very chippy it was kind of more of a just north south game it wasn't much of much of any f- sort of physicality but i mean that first period there's a lot of scrums too yeah i mean you could definitely tell that that these guys are fired up and they're into it and they're ready to go but back in the third period it kind of kind of came back a little bit that's when you know mcisaac's laying guys out cam Parr's laying guys out dropping the gloves and um and then uh Sarkinov gets his first goal from that short side angle, just absolute missile. Yeah, it over was attack his shoulder. Tough angle, it's a really tough angle. And I mean, I, I was, I feel like again that came off his stick really quick too. I, I, I mean, I think he was just kind of flinging it at the net and just happened to go in. But good for him. I thought he had another great game. How uh, fun does it just be a, a forward that size? Man, he is huge. He's big. I mean. That is an intimidating dude. He laid yes. a couple guys out too. Yeah, he did. I mean, he's yeah, he's a big boy. Um first career goal for Sarkinov, took the feed down the wing and sniped it from that tight angle. And he was fired up and the team was all fired up for him. And yeah. We were all fired up for him. And <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was a it was a great home opener. Chiefs ended up walking away with a four to one win. Dawson Cowan, second night in a row with a win, earning third star of the game, 33 saves on 34 shots. Uh, Tri-City actually ended up out shooting us 30. I saw that. 34 yeah. to 29. And they won the face-off battle 32-29. But, it, I mean, that's pretty 50-50. Uh, Chiefs were two for five on the power play and four for five on the penalty kill. So special teams doing good work yeah. again. And then uh, what else was there for that? Shea Van Olm was up to six points through four games. Three goals, had, had himself a weekend. Yeah, he. I, I definitely think he should be in consideration for Player of the Week with that. I do too. Um, <clears throat> Rasmus Ekstrom trails him by just one point with three goals and two assists through the four games. Nice. So, over those two games, the weekend the Chiefs went eleven for twelve on the penalty kill. So that's that's huge too. Um, we got two more home games coming up uh, next weekend against Kelowna and Seattle before they head out on their Eastern trip. Which once again we were talking about is I think that's going to be really beneficial down the stretch for these guys. Oh, definitely. 
because because you, you see how much that they're spending time together on the bus and yeah. seeing their families and playing in all these rinks that they grew up going to games to and playing oh, yeah. games in and the, i mean they're got to be fired up for that it builds the chemistry and i think having that early on in the season is going to be really huge because we haven't yeah. seen that in a long time no it's usually right after the christmas like the middle of january when we go on that yeah, it's either right after Christmas or it's like right a couple weeks before the season ends. Yeah. And it's like, that's not really going to be very beneficial by then they're I mean, obviously they're a tight knit group already and you can right. just tell that they're a tight knit group by how they're playing out there. Oh yeah. A couple, you made a comment to me during uh, a scrum, like I, I don't remember who it was, got knocked down, like kind of a cheap shot and everybody rushed in right away yeah. at him. It's like, these guys got each other's backs. And I think yeah. that, that that's not something we'd seen very much the last no. couple of seasons either so pretty yeah, good um, stuff pretty um, exciting exciting home opener to go to for sure well another exciting piece of it was pre-game when we got our captain announcement yeah uh we had uh five former chiefs there on the ice with the jersey i only i only knew i think three of them it was uh bardero tanner mort and who else was there shane maitland maitland Hawking. Oh, Justin Hawking. Yeah. That yeah. was the other one that I recognized. But um they announced Berkeley Catton as the 37th captain in Chiefs franchise history. Yeah, that was nice. Perfect choice. Yeah, I we mean, think I, so. I, I didn't think it could be really anybody else. I I you could tell that he's a leader just by the way that he speaks too. Yes. Like the things that he says uh during interviews and everything too, you can definitely tell that he's he's loved by everybody in that locker room too. Oh yeah. And, uh and, and I mean, not only is he pretty much the face of the team right now, but he's a great leader too. And he's I think he's gonna the perfect candidate for captain. Oh, me too. Me too. He's a pretty humble kid for being <laughs> as good as he is too. Oh yeah, for sure. And that's something that I mean I mean you know, style of play aside and everything. It's like, that's uh, the personality and everything too, is a big part of, of it too. And yeah, um, that was another thing that I was talking to some buddies about at intermission was like, I mean, he's, he's all over the ice. He's not a lazy skater. He's, he's not a, you know, sit in one spot and wait for a pass kind of guy. He's, he's moving his feet constantly too. And he's playing a 200 foot game. And that's another thing that you look for in a captain. And it's like, you want somebody that's going to lead by example. And I think he does a great job of that, even as young as he is. Yeah, he does. I mean, and I, I, he's got to be one of the youngest captains in team history. I would think. I would think so. Cause I, I can't think of anybody else that had, I felt like for a long time, it was always a 20 year old or yes. a ni- 19 or a 20 year old. Yeah. Um, And the last 19 year old I can think of is Ty Smith. Yeah. So um. Uh, I think that again, I think that was the perfect choice and you could tell that he's, he's happy to be the captain and he's, he's ready to step up into that mm-hmm. role mm-hmm. Um, coming back from, you know, Kraken camp and everything too. And I know everybody over at the Kraken are, are stoked for him too. I've oh, seen yeah. a, lot, a lot of uh, Kraken fan pages online talking about it and nice. um, they're all super stoked for him too. And I'm, I'm excited to see how his season goes this year too. Yeah, me too. Uh, some other team news off the ice. Chiefs trade Cooper Michael to the Prince George Cougars in exchange for a 27 fifth rounder. A move that we all kind of knew was coming, I think. We we predicted that, yeah. Um, I, I, again, I think he he was just kind of the odd man out. Sim- similar, similar situation with the imports with Crawl. Yeah. Um, kind of the odd man out. I thought he had a great career with the Chiefs. And he I, did. And, and the thing that... <clears throat> that I was a little bit bummed about for him was that he going to Prince George, who has probably the best draft eligible goalie in, in the NHL draft for this next mm-hmm. year in Ravensbergen. Mm-hmm. And so you're, you're going to see him playing a lot too, but I think maybe having a veteran guy like Michael Luck on their roster is going to be really beneficial for Ravensbergen too. Yes. So I, I think, I, I think, you know, them splitting time and Michael looks, proven to be a starter like oh big time absolutely yeah. be a starter and prince george they know how to train their goalies they yes. know how to build their goalies and make them stars i mean they've they've had a number of them over the years yeah. ty young tyler yeah. brennan taylor gochier i mean <clears throat> they they know what they're doing up there in prince george matt bardsley says it's a very difficult trade to make but with three goaltenders we felt this was move was a good opportunity for cooper to continue to play 
tremendous person and teammate. We thank him for all he's done for the Chiefs. So wish him all the best. So we get a 27 fifth round pick in exchange for him, which at the time I was kind of at first thought I was thinking it's like a little bit of a under yes, ball. We, we but, talked about that, but it, it makes sense kind of as I thought about it a little bit more, but um, then the, the cause confusing move for me, the next day, the chiefs make a trade with Victoria to pick up goaltender, Ryan Tamlin, 2006 born. Uh, so he's 18 in exchange for an eighth round pick in 25. I was a little bit confused by that at first. And I know some people still kind of are. Uh, I saw a lot of people online thinking that that would meant Cowan was getting traded. And I was like, Oh, I guys, never did see that. I was, I, I had to bite my tongue so hard. Cause I, the things that I wanted to say, I would get Facebook banned for, <laughs> but I was just thinking you guys are dumb as hell. If you think that Cowan's getting traded at all. Yeah. Because he's very clearly the guy. He's the perfect guy to kind of, bring Essler up into that starting yep. role eventually. And I think uh, you and I talked about this too. I think it's kind of more of a depth move in case one of these guys gets injured mm-hmm. or um, I know that the chiefs have a very close relationship with the Spokane Braves. Yes. And they like to send some guys there sometimes too. I yes. wouldn't be surprised to see him end up there. Be. As you said, this guy's only had one WHL game under his belt too. He, he played one game for Victoria last year. Yeah. Um, after the 23-24 season last year, he was ranked 29th by NHL Central Scouting amongst North American goalies, though. That's pretty good. Which is pretty good for somebody that only has one game of WHL yes. experience under his belt. He was named a finalist for the U18 CSSHL Top Goaltender Award and the CSSHL First Team All-Star. Wow. Um, looking into his uh, Elite Prospects page, he's a big dude. Is he? Six foot eight, 201 pounds. Wow. Like that's a big boy. Yes, it um, is. And he was actually originally a Chiefs draft pick in um 21, oh, really? I believe. Yeah, he was a 10th rounder, I believe. Hmm. But um, so because I was a little bit confused because in the post it said, Welcome back to Spokane. And I'm thinking, what? And then I looked into it, and yeah, he was one of our 10th round picks, ninth round, I should say. Um, so yeah, again, I, th- I think that's more of a depth move in case, uh, Dawson or Essler get injured yeah. at whatever point, or, you know, Cowan goes off to world juniors or whatever, you know, look at this organization dotting their eyes and crossing their T's. I know it's nice. It's refreshing, isn't it? It is. We made a lot of trades the last couple of days. We made another one today. I saw that, um, traded the rights to D man, Jack Bosquet. He's, uh, he it was a kind of a higher, um, pick. He was a, round did we select 10 he was the 10th round pick in the 22 prospects draft he's from uh dallas texas he can't he did come to our camp this year though i do remember seeing him um but we traded the rights to him to the red deer rebels in exchange for a conditional seventh rounder in 25 or 26 i'm assuming that's if he reports to red deer right is the condition um i liked what i saw with with him in camp too but he, again it's a d-man and honestly we're pretty we're pretty well off with our demon yes. right now. I think like with the young guys coming in and then the veterans that we have coming back. Yeah. So I'm okay with this move. It's it never hurts to have it, you know, another draft pick. No, it doesn't matter the year. So, and that can also be trade leverage somewhere down the line too. Yes. Um, he is playing in Canada with U18 prep team right now though. So we'll, we'll kind of keep our eye outs on that and see if we end up getting that pick or not. But um, I think that's about all I got for, past uh information and news nice but, so yeah our next two games are friday against Kelowna at the arena and then Kelowna's, uh, Kelowna's good again yeah tj Gimla, i think is going to be kind of a yeah force to be reckoned with and not only him michael chichek's their leading scorer right now too is he really mm-hmm. nice that, that's pretty good i think that could be a, a pretty good matchup on on friday I'm, yeah. I'm excited to see that and then uh welcome seattle to town for the first game against them this year on saturday and then head off to their eastern road trip after that nice that'll won't be good get, won't get to see another home game until i think the 25th of october oh wow but i'm excited to watch some of these games online and yeah me too. I, there is one game i think it's against regina and the um I, I i don't remember what day it is but it's a one o'clock start oh is it really mm-hmm Nice. So uh, that'll be fun too. Hopefully yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be done working by then. I can come up and watch it. Yeah. Um, what are you thinking for this weekend? 
Uh, I'm going to call 4-4 game against Kelowna, and I don't know who's going to win. It's going to go to overtime, and I'm not sure who's going to win. Okay. And then Seattle, I think we're going to win 5-2. I'm going to say goaltending duel on Friday. Chiefs going to win 2-1 to one in overtime. Okay. And I'll say... Seattle just got some of their guys back they, from NHL camps. They got, uh, I mean, they have a lot of, they're like, I think they're the youngest team in the league. They are. Year. They <laughs> are. Um, but they I have so- Sawyer Minio just came back. Yeah. So they're going to have a little bit of, a little bit more leverage. And I, I know Scott Ratzleff is out. Um, and I think he's in the AHL this year. I can't remember who their other goalies are, but it's, I think I think that could be a pretty good game too for the most part. I think the Chiefs are going to pick up a four to two win. Okay, four two move move to five and one on the year going into the Eastern Swing. Wouldn't that be a nice start after a half dozen games? That sure would. And definitely would be yeah. a nice breath of fresh air compared to yeah. years past. So first pl- first place right now, isn't that awesome? I yeah. mean, yeah, sure, it's early, but it's always nice to see Spokane on the top yeah, of the list. It is. So. It is. And, and, and even that one loss that we had, I mean, I thought we still we played well against PG. We, we, we were just, I mean, we were very, very shorthand with injuries and visa yeah. issues and NHL guys. And no, nope, it um, was a good game. So I, I'm really looking forward to seeing how the weekend goes, and we'll kind of recap that and everything else that happens in the Me next too. next episode. Sounds good. All right. Hopefully, get some guests on, eh? Yeah, maybe if they answer their phones. We got some freaking flakers. We do. That's all right. It's all right. We got some interviews lined up too. So. We'll we'll be getting things going, the ball rolling here pretty soon. At some point. All right. Well, till next week. Till next time. Go Chiefs, baby. Go Chiefs.